refrain about uh, planning this session. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to organize it. So I kept asking the Holy Spirit to give me some wisdom and some direction. And as is customary of the case, he was faithful and did that. I grew up on a small farm. And my father was a spring maker, a skilled spring maker, who made special orders for NASA and for the space program. And he was also a carpenter. And he was also a farmer. So I learned a lot from my father. And some words that he used to use quite a bit came back to me as I was doing this preparation. And <clears throat> he would talk to me about uh, for amending the fence, uh, will you run and get a board for me? And I would say, sure, how long? He says, oh, six feet more or less. And I'd come home after school and he would say to me, I'd like to have you kill five or six chickens. And I'd say, well, which do you want, five or six? He said, oh, more or less. And that was a standard phrase that he used. And I would kill the chickens, and I knew that one was going to be cooked for supper, one was going in the freezer, and the other four were going to elderly neighbors. And I can't tell you how many thousand chickens I killed in my life, and turkeys, but oftentimes my parents were talking about that word more or less. My dad would leave me instructions in the morning when I get up, and he would say, I'd like you to plant part of the garden. We had a big garden. And the instruction sheet would say, two rows of onions, more or less. Now I knew what that meant. That meant if you ran out of onions before two rows were full, that was okay. Or if you had to go over into the third row with the onions you had left, that was okay too. That's what the more or less meant. So as I read through these characteristics of adult learners, and had the opportunity to research them, these words from my dad came to my mind. And in fact, for me, I was able to summarize the whole message of those nine characteristics in four words that spoke to me. I don't know if they'll speak to you, but let me share them with you. First word is less. Second word is me. Third word is more. And the last word is we. Less me, more we. And I know as a teacher that sometimes you get these backwards. I get too much of me and too little of we. So I wanted to focus this evening on this whole concept of less me and more we. How do we get the we involved in our class and how do we get less of us involved in the teaching aspect of it? So with that, uh, I have some discussion questions. My plan is not to talk all night, uh, but to encourage you to talk, actually. Take one of these, please. <clears throat> Four blank lines at the top uh, stand for less me, more we.
And then what do we learn from that? And then we identify things that we would like to do perhaps differently or new for the current year, and we try and launch out in that. So with that, uh, let's take a look at the first question. I get the right sheet here. The list that says, what do we learn by reading the characteristics of adult learners? What are we told to do less of, and what are we told to do more of? Now, if I could have a volunteer, perhaps, to write <coughs> on the whiteboard, it would be helpful. I think we'll read it if I can. <clears throat> I'm sure that uh, it's not going to be in Korean, is it? <laughs> not intentional. <laughs> so let's have a little brainstorming as, uh, as a group of folks here. What are we told to do less of? And we'll do the less column on the left first, and then the right column we'll do the more of. So less, it's less extended lecture. Yeah. Okay. That came through rather thematically, didn't it? What else? <clears throat> More open-ended questions or encouraging people to sort of discover on their own. Okay, that goes into more column. <clears throat> Less, uh, Main points, in other words, focus on one idea. Okay, a central idea, which we develop. Prayer with them and intervention with them in a 
class. That would be entirely appropriate. Uh, now that the boy that was injured is they flew in the mail has broken everything down the left side where the car ran over him, but he is improving. And we've been praying, a lot of people have been praying for miraculous work on the part of the Lord, and he's done some miraculous things so far. So that is an appropriate time to uh, dedicate a period to uh, some need. Any other things that uh, you saw in the reading? Represented more or less. Uh, and maybe this is caught in vision flexibility, but it, I think teachers have a tendency to follow the same pattern in terms of you know how you do your lesson plan, and really need to change up because people learn differently. So more kind of varied approaches to uh, teaching a lesson. Okay, good. Thank you. others for they Let me ask you a follow-up question to this. Uh, when we look at the uh, more we, what would we probably have reference to in terms of we? What all would we include? Everyone in the class. Okay. Very much so. The teacher and the learners. Who else? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Definitely. So we need more of all those things functioning together under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, drawing truth into our groups and out of us. Okay, the second aspect of this uh, is called the link. I sat under Stuart Briscoe's ministry for a number of years, and he does that with everything. <laughs> so I picked up the habit. Uh, I love the British. Yes. I love the, the British exposition. <laughs> so the link uh, <clears throat> we're talking about. Uh, Looking at these questions individually, even brought some note cards for you. Oh, I'm sorry. On one side of the note card, I would like to have you uh, answer one of the questions. Uh, what, if anything, could we as, I'm sorry, under the link, how would I describe my teaching with respect to the reading list? This is an individual activity now. And on the other side, the second question, how would I describe the role of the learners in my class? What the question now? What are answers now? Your answers. Did I make that clear? Sign being part of this? Yeah, characteristics of development. Yeah. List of the options of credence, so, so that it was listed. Oh, I didn't pick that up. <clears throat> Thank you.
take another minute or two, please. Thing uh, while they discussed, I started 
several years ago, just going down and sitting at one of their tables. Because I, I found out I, I was wrong with that assumption, at least my experience was. Stuff that I wouldn't even consider, which was really good, was happening at tables. And it would enhance the, my teaching in the next section, in the next wave. I, I probably, maybe I'm saying something different than you're saying. Um, well, I think what you're saying is true. I've seen some of that happen too. But like, uh, just the, the last lessons that was in the uh, early risers program, Cheryl was teaching there, and it was really good material. And she had us break up into groups, and this gal at our table went on a rabbit trail that had nothing to do with the subject, nothing. It just starts talking about some personal things, but they weren't really kinds that you need to stop the discussion for to go into, but it was completely off. Out in the right field somewhere, about her personal experiences this week. It had nothing to do with the lesson material, nothing to do with what we were doing. And I thought it was a waste of time for the 10 minutes we were there because she continued to talk so fast and so much that nobody else got a word in. Right. I'm not saying I totally agree with that. Part of what I've the best is I hear the people in pairs initially rather than a group. So there is discussion amongst two people, and they get them into a slightly larger group then. So people are already kind of wrapped up and have some discussion, and they can chime in a little bit, rather than trying to avoid that one person kind of dominating the conversation as well. And the other I think did that, and the other tables apparently did talk about church material, because when we got back together to discuss it, it was good. Sure. I'm sure we can all share Examples of people getting off the reservation. <laughs> Any other thoughts about uh, the role of learners in the class? We've been overlapping with that. I think the questions really have to be well thought out and framed. That's the key to really bringing the learner into whatever content or concept you're trying to do. And sometimes questions are created just by the discussion that takes place. Uh, all of a sudden, you can pursue a type of concepts I used to deal with the students was don't be willing to accept just a surface answer. You know, you be thinking of how you can put the speed in and dig a little deeper. Valuable insight. Yeah, the, the question, uh, how would I describe the role of learners in the class? I put down personal communal discovery. That they, it's neither, you know, just my individual, I'm not that. I, I think I, I would want the teacher then to see himself not just purely the individual thinking their own thoughts, making their own judgments and applications, but also part of a, a, a communal community to figure they're learning this together. I mean, actually, the teacher that to engage that. I think mean, what you said, questions are intriguing because if you ask a question that's too elementary and simple, it's almost it's almost condescending. Kind of it's, it's, it's like, okay, yeah, I'm going to answer this. Jesus, Jesus, the Jesus. Right. <laughs> Jesus. Or it's something in the form. But if you ask one that's a little technical or too, nobody wants to be wrong. I, I think the, the, the best questions are the ones that like, you can't really be wrong about. It's more like, your, your insight, your idea, how does this connect with this? Um, the, the, it doesn't, you don't feel the, the risk of, of saying the wrong thing, um, but it's not too, so, it's so simple. It's, sometimes you make it so, you answer two seconds, you'll stare at each other until the next section. So in other words, I shouldn't ask each other what's the problem with the That's an easy one. <laughs> too simple, too short. Presbyterians will get in trouble. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I kind of want to build on that. Like, Part of our responsibility as the facilitator is to create a safe environment for people so they can share, they can write it, and they can take risks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they don't want to be embarrassed, but we have to kind of let them have the authority and power to kind of take that. It's a lot easier to do that in a smaller group right. subset than it is to say, well, I think. Mm -hmm. right. right. And that is one of the points and the characteristics of learners is creating that safety for it. Mm -hmm people in the class. And that's one nice thing about our adult learning communities is typically these people are together for a long time. 
So, I mean, you have people coming in and out, but there's kind of an ethos for each class where they know each other and have a community sense already. So they are pretty comfortable with each other somewhat. But I think the more that we have sort of that central idea as teachers that we're heading towards sort of that goal in mind, um, then they feel more comfortable discussing it because they kind of know where you're headed. So they kind of have an idea of how they're supposed to get there. And they have a lot of rich experiences, life experiences. One of the neat things about teaching adults is that they have rich life experiences that they can bring to bear on most any topic that you're talking about uh, in the class. And opportunities to draw them out uh, are really valued and invaluable, I think. Both. Okay, how about skipping to the learning then? In what ways can these characteristics point us toward growth as a group of teachers and as individuals? Uh, what, if anything, could we as a group of teachers focus on this or future years that uh, help us more effectively teach our adult classes? And same question this year with respect to our own teaching style and practices. What could we focus on? I think it would be neat, maybe in person beside you, you dialogue with them in groups of two or three for a minute about uh, these topics, and then we can list some of them. You know that we have topics that have been identified that we're going to read from the book, and that's great. Looking forward to those. There may be others that you'd be interested in, and this would be an appropriate time to share those so that uh, Jeff and Jenny would have a record of those for for future use, perhaps. So maybe in uh, just two or three of you together, you could talk about these questions that, uh, what do we learn about from the characteristic that help us grow? I 
sort of the dynamics of the group before you walk into it is really helpful. Yeah, Re Revelation and eschatology in 45 minutes. Yes, it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. We talked about the concept of launching some changes perhaps in our own personal teaching styles and also perhaps as things we'd like to see as a group of adult teachers. So we could uh, focus on those questions uh, from the growth possibilities that uh, are listed here and others you may have listed. What one to two growth goals would you choose to change this year as uh, you develop your teaching style for the coming year? I have some cards here that you may want to write some things down on. And give you some sense of how the Holy Spirit gets involved sometimes. Uh, I was looking at uh, I'm perplexed yet. I'm sorry, I'm listening. I'm probably just slow on the take here. The uh, give you a feel for how the Holy Spirit gets involved. I was looking for some different colored cards just so they'd be different from the white ones I passed out. And I had to mine the different color and I get down there and I wasn't even aware of the fact that uh, I had these dots down there and I hear the Holy Spirit talking to me saying the green up. Sounds kind of crazy, but uh, that's the way it works with me sometimes. The green cards and then the red dots. Uh, green is the color of growing things. Red is the color of Christ's blood. So talk about things that we can list down here that we want to do as teachers to really grow in Christ and help others grow in Christ. Now that may be a bit of a stretch, but to me it was the Holy Spirit that was speaking into my life. But I hadn't thought about that at all until I went down and started digging around in my closet. So on this card, are there one or two things that you would like to do this coming year that would represent a change for you and improve the learning lot of the students that you're working with. That make sense? thoughts you'd like to share? I know for myself that uh, I'm going to work on less information. Because 
I love to study, and I love to share what I study. But we need to focus more on the central theme, and that would certainly be a goal of mine.
Yeah, it was funny. It's kind of like one of the events I took was to go observe all of you teaching as well. Because I always learn about watching others teach as well. Yeah, we had a suggestion about uh, the evaluative portion where we get some feedback. Uh, one of the things that uh, I've done in the past, not here, but is ask uh, three people in the class if they would be willing to provide feedback after like three or four sessions, maybe sit down with me and just share what was on their heart about the way I was teaching, material I was covering, and I found that to be very helpful. And in a former church, uh, I was a part of a group that provided that kind of feedback to the pastor, face to face, uh, there were six of us, and uh, I think he found it helpful. He continued it for a year or two and then and discontinued it. <laughs> I, think yeah, the, I, think, I think the important thing though is you have to have a wide variety of people right. to do that because we all learn differently. Right. Uh, you, you might have a teaching style that one person is going to absolutely hate and another person is absolutely going to love. And so you have to kind of find the balance of, you know, what some of the criticism, some of the praise, right. I think, across the spectrum. Agreed. Any other observations that you want to make about things you're going to pursue this year? What's the one thing that made Christ an effective teacher? Illustrations. I get stories. Parables. Yeah, I'm the shoots. Besides that. I'm standing from a human spell. He was so tied into his father that uh, definitely it helped. He was clearly from the South because he told stories. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, when I was researching these characteristics, uh, I may have mentioned somewhere that uh, somebody has done a couple chapters on the 20 methods that Christ used to teach, 20 methodologies. So that'd be interesting sometime to just talk about those as, as teachers. So Einstein had a little quote about teaching that I listed here, and uh, we talked about the whole concept of less me and more we. Do you see any of that in what Einstein said? I do, but on the other hand, if I was a pupil of Einstein, I'd be disappointed. <laughs> like, Come on, I want the treatment. I'm here. I'm the lecture. I'm okay with it. I think if I was in the Einstein class and he was putting us in discussion groups, I'd be like, I paid for you. <laughs> Especially the, if he doesn't know where he's going. <laughs> this seemed to me to be a bit relevant to what we're talking about. Um, he's saying certainly that um, less of me and, and I'm going to create conditions where there can be more of, of the we grow there by and I think that's a valuable thing. It's interesting that she was signed sign here because he was a very poor student. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> he was just bored with everything I suspect. <laughs> well so he, 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 was, he struggled with school. So I got how he did. He's not the first genius that struggled with school. He was my other son genius. relate to adult learners, four pages long, and you may think that's a little wordy and lengthy to remember. So in case uh, that that's your feeling, I cut it down. <laughs> the sheet is coming around. <clears throat> You take each of the nine characteristics that we talked about. I try to summarize them in one word, and I hope it makes some sense and maybe is helpful. So, what do we want our adults to be? Well, we want them to be learners when they're in the class, even when they're out of the class. 
And we want them to be contributors to the class, be participants. Certainly, we want them to be comfortable with the class. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, situations where adult learners are not comfortable. They're at risk adult learners, so to speak, because of socioeconomic status, because of demographics, uh, for whatever reason. And we have to be particularly sensitive to people like that that might be in, in our class. Certainly, we want them to be focused on the class. And to do that, we want to get them right into it from the get-go. We don't want to have rambling introductions. We want to focus on the topic so they'll get grabbed hold of, so that we hook them right at the onset and pull them right into the lesson. Part of that is we want them to be captivated. And certainly, uh, potential for their growth is greater when they're captivated by what we're leading. Certainly everybody wants to be included. They want to feel like they're a part of the group and a value part of the group. And that's easier said sometimes than done. We want them to be engaged during the class. We want them to be reflective about the class. Think about it during class and obviously after. And we want them to be changed from the class. So these are kind of one word summaries of those nine key points, which I hope are helpful and which give us some view of what an adult learner might look like if they are what we want them to be. Then I just included a little section here, how we want to pray for our adults. We need to pray for ourselves, obviously, in preparation. That goes on spoken, I hope, or on needed to be spoken. But it's important, I think, to pray for the adults in our class. And Paul gives us some guidance, since he prays for these people that he's writing to in the first chapter of all these books. And we get some guidelines from him about what to pray for the people that we're teaching. Now, I'm not going to look at these and pull them out, but I trust that you will as individual teachers take the opportunity to look at what Paul prayed for and translate some of that into prayer for our own adults. And how do we want our adults to look? And I was hoping that we would be able to see in this uh, scripture citation from 2 Corinthians a bit of the concept of less me, more we. Because Paul is saying here, it's not about me. It's about these people that I minister to looking like Jesus Christ. And certainly that would be our goal as teachers of adults, to help them become, through the power of the Holy Spirit, people that look more like Jesus Christ. And I would hope that we would aspire to do that and take strides this year to do that. Now, one final thing. So you don't walk away and forget, I made a trip to Office Max and did a silly little thing, but you need a book marker. It might help you remember more or less. More or less? I want to let that you. <laughs> so that's just a... Uh, it's a little takeaway. You know what I'm thinking of? You kill chickens. <laughs> that's, all right. that's thousands of... Stuff. Stuff. Get to the description. <laughs> First I would think of little Straight little chickens in the yard. Uh, <laughs> but image is never going to go away. So the question then is Jeff, um, yeah. for training a good listener and learner? <laughs> he learned. Yeah, yeah, he was captivated. <laughs> <laughs> not sure about his change. <laughs> that was not an intended consequence. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually a great story. 
I'll tell you what you did, and I know you intended this, was hearing about you as a boy with your dad drew me in. Yeah. I thought I knew where you were going, but it didn't matter to me because I was listening to the story and you made it be connected. And that was the purpose of it. And that's the purpose of trying to engage any class is uh, drawing them and writing the onset and stuff. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Well done. You know, we, uh, if we do nothing else from what we learned tonight, there's a lot of good stuff tonight. Mm -hmm. This how we want to pray for our adults. I'm glad you put those verses down there. Just those three, you know, Paul uh, shares his prayer with the people he writes to, and that's his teaching through his letter. I just think I just love the circle here. If we if we just come into that. Mm -hmm. In addition to trying to teach the best we can, if all the men who are on this tape circle pray for the people of our ALCs, it would be a pretty powerful thing. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not suggesting you don't, but I think sometimes um, we, we jump right by that to go to the learning section. So thank you for that. We're probably not as deliberate about it as Paul was. <laughs> yeah. And it wouldn't hurt to approach his deliberateness, I'm sure. So maybe. Uh, we can close in prayer. Uh, you might mention it. Uh, I just mentioned to you that uh, Roger is back in the hospital. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, he has, uh, whenever he has a dialysis, it's, it's, almost, it's almost routine now. Something is triggered that kind of tells He has pancreatitis right now. Mm -hmm. And it's all, it's, it's, and everything's always complicated. It's not one thing, right? With him. So he's back, admitted. Mm -hmm. I think this morning or yesterday, yesterday evening after his, after his dialysis. Pretty sick, you already talk about Paul Bayer, so they're treating him as usual. He doesn't say much, but when I pray for him, but thanks for mentioning that. Pray for him. Okay. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for this opportunity to share together as teachers. Thank you that you've called us to this ministry. And I pray, Lord, that uh, something that you've led us to tonight will be helpful in reaching out to these adults that we teach and helping them become more like the image of Christ that you want us, uh, want us to be. And Lord, we do pause to praise for Pastor Roger. We ask, O oh God, that once again that you would step powerfully into his life with your healing hand. We pray, Lord, that you would support him, that you would sustain him, that you would build him up again. And I pray, Lord, that we would just pray faithfully for your ministry in his life, the mending of his heart, and just speak to him audibly, Lord, about his, assur his assurance of your presence with him. Lord, we praise you for your goodness and your faithfulness, and for this time to give you Christ's name. Amen. 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 Amen.